Hey everyone, welcome back to Tip of the Week. In this week's video, we're gonna jump into a really simple sky replacement so you can see how easy it is to use the AI Quick Mask tool to quickly replace a sky. So let's jump into Photo Raw and let's get started here. I'm inside of the edit module of Photo Raw and let's just take a quick look at this photograph first. So when we're doing sky replacements, not every image needs a sky replacement. So when you're trying to do a sky replacement, look for photographs that have an overcast vibe. These images that have really soft lighting on them are the best images for sky replacement shots. Now, if we had a sun in here or we had some other element that was creating shadows in here, it'd be a lot more difficult to go in and replace this sky. But if we take a look at this image, we have this large tonal area of pretty much just gray and white right here as we do on this reflection. So it's gonna be really easy to go in here and just remove this sky, replace it, and then add on a reflection later. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to replace skies on your own. The best images work when they're really, really overcast or there's a ton of soft, nice, even light all around the image. So to start with our sky replacement, <clears throat> so to start with our sky replacement, let's just go in and grab our sky real quick. So to start, so to start with the sky replacement, let's just go grab our sky real quick. We're gonna head over to our layers pane here and I'm gonna click on this plus button. And now inside of my extras here, I can head over to my extras and I can click on one extras. I can go into textures. I'll just scroll down to skies. And now I have all of these different skies here. And one of my absolute favorite ones of these skies is this skies 48. So I'll just click skies 48. And boom, we have this new sky on our photograph. So I'll just hit V on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my transform tool. With the transform tool, I can move my layer around and scale it down. So I'm just gonna move this layer up a bit like that. And let's make it a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna hold down shift and that's gonna ma uh, maintain the aspect ratio of this image. And then I'm just gonna pull in on this little handle on the side just to make this image a bit smaller. And then I'll just drag it over here. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to align this little I mean, there's no horizon line on this cloud photograph here, but if you imagine this bottom area as the horizon line, you kind of want to line that up with the horizon line that's already on your base photograph. So if we go over to our layers here, let's just lower the opacity to that skies 48 layer. And now we can see the bottom base layer a little bit better and we can align it. So I'm just going to kind of pull this down a little bit, maybe right there. Looks pretty good for the horizon line, maybe like right on that bridge. And now what I can do is I'll just head over to my opacity. I'll raise that back to 100. And then I'm gonna go into my layers here and I'm just gonna drag this skies 48 right below that sky replacement layer. And actually I'll just double click that sky replacement layer and I'll just rename it base layer. So we have our base layer and then we have our sky. So with our base layer, we need to mask out our sky now and that will reveal the new sky below it. So to do that, we're gonna use our AI Quick Mask tool. Now, whenever you're masking and compositing, you always wanna make sure that whatever layer you wanna work on is selected. So I'm gonna make sure that I have this base layer selected here because that's the layer that I want to mask. And I'm actually gonna go over here and I can access my AI Quick Mask tool by just heading over to my, my tool well over here on the left side of Photo Raw, and I can just click in the masking tools. Now AI Quick Mask just lives right up here in my top tool modifier bar here where it just says AI. You can also just grab it quickly by hitting W on your keyboard. So now that I have this AI Quick Mask tool, I'm just gonna raise the brush size a bit with the right bracket on my keyboard so I can see what we're working with here. And, and when working with the AI Quick Mask tool, let's first go in and tell Photo Raw which areas we want to remove from this layer. I'm gonna head up to my mode here and I'm gonna click drop. You can also switch your mode by holding down shift and hitting X on your keyboard. So now that I'm set to drop here, I'm going to paint on in red all the areas that I want to remove from this layer. Well, for right now, all I want to remove is this sky layer on top. So I'll just use this big brush size and I'll paint on in red, just kind of all over this sky.
just like that. And you can lower your brush size and get a little more technical with these smaller parts. So just lower your brush size with the left bracket on your keyboard. And then you can kind of fine tune this mask a little bit more. Perfect. So now that we've painted on that red on top of the sky area up here, we need to take our keep mode and we need to paint green on the bottom area of our photograph because that's the area that we want to keep. So I'll just head up to my mode here and I'll switch it from drop to keep. You can also do that with the bracket keys on your keyboard. And I'll just increase my brush size a bit, actually quite a bit. And then I'll just do the same thing, but to the bottom area of our image. And the reason I'm doing this and I'm not masking out that water is because we're gonna create the reflection with a blend mode layer. We're not actually gonna remove that bottom water area from this photograph. So that looks pretty good. Maybe we could make our brush size a bit smaller and kind of go in here and clean things up a bit. That looks pretty good like that. And I'm just kind of telling Photo Raw here, you know, these are the areas, these are the tones that I want to keep. So keep these tones. And then in red, those are all telling Photo Raw, remove these from this layer. And then it'll just mask it out for you. So let's just go in here and I'll paint this on. That looks pretty good. And what we can do here is we can actually just head up and click apply and we can refine as we go. So looking at this now, it's done a really good job actually of detecting that top sky layer and then detecting our foreground. So I think that looks pretty good just like that. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do is just lower my brush size a bit, actually quite a bit, and then I'm just gonna brush on to that little flag area that might give us a little more of that flag. But I think everywhere else looks pretty decent down there. So I'll just head up, I'll click apply and boom, it just gave me a little bit of that flag back over there. So now I'll just head up and I'll click done here and there we go. I mean, we have a basic, basic sky replacement now. So now we can go in and start doing the fun stuff to this edit. So the next thing I need to do is I need to raise the exposure for the sky layer here. Remember that the layer we were working with originally had a really white gray sky. And this guy is a little bit dim compared. So let's head over to our layers here. I'm going to select that sky layer and then I'll just go to my tone and color and I'll pull up on the exposure just a little bit, maybe about 0.6 of a, of a stop. That looks pretty good. So now let's go over and we need to, so now that we've raised the exposure for that sky layer, Let's duplicate the sky layer so we can create the reflection on the water here. So I'm just gonna right click this sky layer in my layers pane and I'm gonna duplicate that layer. Then I'm gonna double click it and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna type reflection. Now with this reflection layer, I'm actually going to reset the tone and color from that because when I reflect this, I want it to be darker than the sky. Whenever you're dealing with reflections, the reflection is always going to be darker than the sky that you're replacing. So let's drag that reflection above our base layer, just like that. Then again, I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my transform tool. With the transform tool, you can do things like move your layer, rotate your layer and flip your layer. So I'm just gonna go up and I'm gonna flip my layer just like that. And then I'm gonna drag it down. And again, just align it with the horizon line that I had before. And we can always head over and lower the opacity and do the same thing. So I'll probably put it about right there. We're kind of trying to align this cloud with this cloud or make it kind of symmetrical here. So maybe about right there looks pretty good. So now let's head back over to that reflection layer Let's increase that opacity to 100. And now we're gonna use a blend mode to sort of blend this in with the contrast of the scene. So make sure you have the reflection layer selected. Then we'll just click on this gear icon here. That's our blending options. Now we're gonna head down to this blending option called overlay. Now, if we click on overlay, it's going to blend this layer, this reflection layer into our base layer. Now you can see with the overlay blend mode, it's using contrast to blend it. So we're not actually seeing a ton of the other tones for that sky. 
We're just seeing the stuff that blends in with the other whites and grays in here. So now we need to mask out these areas from the right and the left so we don't have this weird block on these buildings. So I'll just hit B on my keyboard here and I'm gonna go into my reflection layer and I'm gonna select the masking options for it just to make sure that I'm masking on that reflection layer. Then I'll just paint away any excess areas of reflection here. Make sure you really kind of pay attention to the areas where it's on the buildings and whatnot because sometimes it'll just go unnoticed and then you'll look at it later and go, oh, I wish I would have painted that out. But this one's a pretty basic composite, so you probably won't have too much trouble going in here and removing any of this from your scene. But that looks pretty good, not horrible. And then we have up here, we have these little uh, posts right there that are holding up that bridge and those have the reflection on it and those obviously wouldn't if that were real life. So let's paint that off of there real quick like that. Perfect, that looks pretty good like, like that. Okay, so now we have sort of our base composite with our reflection and our sky. I don't see any areas that we really need to clean up on here with our mask. Photo Raw did a really good job in the beginning of doing that for us. So what we need to do is just make sure everything looks natural now. One thing I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna make sure that I have that reflection layer selected again. And I'm gonna go into my effects. I'm gonna add a filter to that reflection and I'm gonna click blur. Now with this blur filter, I'm gonna use this motion blur and I'm gonna make the distance just kind of believable. So maybe like that, because there's a, a little rippling in the water here. So that blur, that motion blur will kind of go a long way to kind of match that. And you don't have to go crazy, crazy intense with this. So I'll just lower the opacity a bit maybe. And then maybe about 75. And it's very subtle, but if I zoom in here and I turn this off and on, you can see it kind of takes a little bit of the harshness of the clouds away in there. So that looks pretty good like that. I think we're good to go as far as the look goes on a reflection. Now let's just go over to our layers here and let's create a composited layer. And what that's called is just a stamped layer. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna right click this layer and I'm gonna select new stamped layer. Now what that's doing is that's taking these three layers before it and it's duplicating them and then merging them together into this single composited layer. So now I can rename this, I'll just double click to rename it, I'll rename it composite. And now we can work on this layer and create a stylistic vibe using different LUTs or filters or local adjustments. So one thing I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna go into my local tab, I'm gonna click on darken, and I'm gonna use my adjustment brush, I'm just gonna increase my brush size with the bracket key on my keyboard, and I'm gonna brush a little bit of a darkening local adjustment into the water here. Now the reason I wanna do that is because again, when you have a reflection on water, it's, it's gonna be darker than whatever area that it's reflecting. So you always wanna keep that in mind. And obviously that's really intense. So let's just head over to our adjustment here. Let's lower the opacity of that to kind of taste. That looks pretty good right there. Maybe right there at 75 or so, 70. And now what I'm gonna, gonna do is I'm gonna protect these buildings here. I'm gonna go over to this gear icon of this adjustment. That's gonna access my, again, my kind of blending options and I have some other options down here. And I'm gonna use this shadows slider and I'm gonna pull that up and that's just gonna protect any shadowy areas on this, this river right there. And I can also do it to my midtones a bit too, but you're also gonna be pulling out some of those middle grays from that uh, local adjustment. So just keep in mind when you're using these sliders. But I think I could pull up on that a little bit and that looks pretty good, right? Nah, maybe I'll leave it down. Turn this off and on. Maybe pull it back a hair, but you get the idea. Looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good for the reflection. Now let's just go and we'll add a filter here. And let's just make it quick and easy. We'll add a LUT. And let's just scroll through these mores and let's see what we got for some cool styles. And let's just do this, 1983. That looks like a good, good vibe for this shot. Yeah, it kind of dims things down a bit. Let's just lower the opacity of that. Maybe raise the saturation 
And let's add one last filter just to kind of make things pop. We'll add a curves filter. And with a tone curve, if you're, if you're not familiar with it, the bottom area is my black points. So I have all of my blacks in here. And then as I move up on the tone curve, it just gets brighter and brighter. So I have my shadows, midtones, highlights, and then my whites. So I want this to kind of pop with some midtones, more of a cinematic look. So I'm just going to grab my midtones here. I'll just click and I'll drag up. That'll give me more of a kind of a midtone highlight boost like that. And then I'm going to head back down into my shadows and I'm just going to pull those down just a little bit to give it more of a cinematic kind of high contrast vibe. Perfect. Just like that. And you can always go in and stylize it a bit more to your taste. I'm going to put these photos online so you can download them and edit them and practice. So now let's head up and I'll just show you the before and after. Let's just click on this composite layer. So now I'm just going to head up and in my layers here, I'm just going to turn off this reflection layer and I'm going to right click on my base layer and I'm going to select reset layer properties. That's just going to reset all the masking and any edits to this layer. And so I can see the complete original and then I'll click on the composite layer and we can just turn it off and on to see our original. So we started with this photo and we have this shot. So that's a super easy way to replace a sky inside on one photo raw. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a bit about sky replacing and creating reflections. Thanks. Stay safe. Have a great weekend.